Hello, I'm Dawn Norton and I am an EFT coach and today I'm going to teach you how to use EFT to kick your cravings to the curb. Change, as you know, can be very difficult sometimes. We have great intentions about changing, whether it's a habit or um, a goal that we're trying to accomplish, it can be very difficult to navigate the world of change and that's one of the reasons that you partner with a coach. So as an EFT coach, I'd like to help you uh, use EFT to be more successful in the changes you're making around your food choices. One of the problems with food is we can be emotional eaters. We can have certain food addictions and cravings. And under, unlike other addictions, you can't just stop eating food. So how do you navigate that area when we live in a world that frequently uses food as a means of coming together and celebrating together. And maybe you have a change you're trying to make or a craving you're trying to avoid and it becomes really difficult. So I hope this will help you. Um, one of the things that I have done quite often as I have taught EFT classes is a chocolate demonstration because almost everybody loves some kind of chocolate. I have run across a few people that haven't, but as I hand out chocolate to everyone in the audience and I have them rate their level of craving for chocolate, it's often very high, an eight, nine, or 10 on, on a zero to 10 scale, or sometimes it's really off the charts. But every time I do this demonstration and we do the tapping with chocolate, I've never had a person who didn't hand the chocolate back and say they didn't want it anymore. So I hope that this will be helpful for you, that it will help you with your cravings and with your emotions around eating, and you will be more successful in the goals you're setting and the change you're trying to make in your life. I'm not going to demonstrate EFT. This, this video assumes that you already are familiar with it. If not, you can reach out to me and I can give you more information. Otherwise, there's plenty of information on YouTube, but I can share some resources that I, I know and trust and use. So as you're thinking of a craving, um, I want, well, I want you to think of, so think for just a minute about your very favorite food that you know you should only eat in small amounts or not at all. It might be something sugary or salty, uh, whatever it is, just kind of bring that to mind right now. And pretend as if you have it sitting right in front of you and you have permission to eat as much as you want. And as you sit there looking at that thing, imagining that you're looking at chocolate, cookies, cake, pie, soda, chips, whatever it is, um, just notice on a scale of zero to 10, how much you want to dive into that food and make a note of it. Now, after you have that number, it might be an eight, nine or 10, it might only be low four or five. Notice where you feel that in your body. There might be something going on in your head, your chest, your gut. Just make a note of that and describe what it is in your mind that you're feeling and where you're feeling it. If there's an emotion attached or you know you're an emotional eater, go ahead and identify that emotion as well. If you're angry or frustrated, or if you eat more when you're sad or lonely, just make a note of that. And then if you, whether you do or don't know EFT, if you'll just follow along, just like we're playing Simon Says, do the things that I do, say the things that I say. And I hope to get you some really quick relief in just three to five minutes. Here we go. Even though I have this food craving, and you can insert the name of the food if it's chocolate, for example, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this food craving, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. You say it three times. Even though I have this food craving, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then you just say a reminder phrase, this food craving. It could be this chocolate craving, this soda craving, this pasta craving. It could be anything. I'm going to go with chocolate since that's the one I do most of the time. This chocolate craving. And you just say the one that fits for you. This chocolate craving. 
this chocolate craving. This chocolate craving, this is under the arm. This chocolate craving. Now after doing that, just take a deep breath. Tune into your number. If it was high, 10 or more, seven, eight, nine, has it changed at all? What is your new number? It's supposed to go down. On occasion, I have people that it does go up, but mostly it goes down. So tune into your new number, tune into where you were feeling that before, if it was kind of an anxiety, just, just notice if that's gone down at all. And then notice if there's any change in the emotion that you might've mentioned. And then we do a second round. Even though I still have this craving, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I still have this craving, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I still have this craving, I deeply and completely accept myself. Remaining craving. Remaining chocolate craving. Remaining chocolate craving. Remaining chocolate craving. Remaining craving. I could eat a pound of it. Remaining craving. You can switch up the phrases and say whatever it is you're thinking. Remaining craving. Remaining craving. And then again, take a deep breath. Now just notice, for example, if it went from an eight to a six, is it still a six? Or has it gone down to a four or a three? Sometimes people go straight down to a one after one or two rounds. But you might be at a, a middle number below five, maybe a three, and we just do another round. Even though I still have this craving, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. You can change the phrase just a little bit if you want to. Even though I still have this craving, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I still have this food craving, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Remaining craving. Remaining craving. And if there is an emotion, you could also say emotion. Remaining emotion. Or eating when I'm angry. Eating when I'm alone. Feeling empty. A lot of times when there's cravings, we're trying to fill an emptiness. Remaining craving. I have everything I need. Remaining craving. And then take a deep breath. Hopefully by now you're down to about a one or a zero. If not, you do another round or two. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and throw in an emotion. So maybe even though I have this food craving, because I feel alone and empty, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I still have this food craving because I'm feeling angry, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I still feel this, feel this food craving because I'm feeling frustrated, I deeply and completely accept myself. Remaining craving, this emotional eating. I'm eating because I feel lonely. I'm not really hungry. Remaining craving, emotional eating, feeling alone and empty. Remaining craving, remaining craving and take a deep breath. I hope that you're down to a zero and any time that you need help with food cravings or emotions related to food, go ahead and turn this video back on. Uh, fast forward to where we start the tapping or listen again if you want and then start tapping for the five minutes or so that we did that and I hope you will over time, see great results in your ability to reduce your cravings and to not eat emotionally and to make better change in your life.
can also use this very same video. Even if you're not emotionally eating, you can come back and just use it for an emotion that you're feeling. If you're feeling angry or frustrated or lonely or sad, come in, put this on, and just instead of saying food craving, say this sadness. Put in whatever word suits you at the time. And I hope that you succeed. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much.